is then are the feasts of Passover, in which is slain the Lamb, the one true Lamb, whose blood anoints the doorposts of believers. This is the night when once you led our forebears, Israel's children, from slavery in Egypt and made them pass dry short through the Red Sea. This is the night that with a pillar of fire banished the darkness of sin. This is the night that even now throughout the world sets Christian believers apart from worldly vices and from the gloom of sin, leading them to grace and joining them to his Holy Ones. This is the night when Christ broke the prison bars of death and rose victorious from the underworld. O oh, wonder of your humble care for us, O oh, love, O oh, charity beyond all telling, to ransom a slave you gave away your son. O oh, truly necessary sin of Adam, destroyed completely by the death of Christ. O oh, happy thought that earns so great, so glorious a Redeemer, the sanctifying power of this night dispels wickedness, washes faults away, restores innocence to the fuller and joy to mourners. Oh, truly blessed night, when things of heaven are words to those of earth, and divine to the human. On this your night of grace, O Holy Father, accept this candle as solemn offering, the work of these and of your servants' hands, an evening sacrifice of praise, this gift from your most holy church. Therefore, O oh Lord, we pray you that this candle, hallowed to the honor of your name, may persevere undimmed to overcome the darkness this night. <coughs> Receive it as a pleasing fragrance, and let it mingle with the lights of heaven. May this flame be found still burning by the morning star, the one morning star who never sets, Christ your Son, who coming back from death's domain has shed his peaceful light on humanity and lives and reigns forever and ever.
Dear brothers and sisters, now that we have begun our solemn vigil, let us listen with quiet hearts to the word of God. Let us meditate on how God in times past saved his people, and in these, the last days, has sent us his Son as our Redeemer. Let us pray that our God may complete this paschal work of salvation by the fullness of redemption. Please extinguish your candles. A reading from the book of Genesis. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was a formless void. There was darkness over the deep, and God's spirit hovered over the water. God said, let there be light, and there was light. God saw that light was good, and God divided light from darkness. God called light day, and darkness he called night. Evening came and morning came, the first day. God said, let there be a vault in the waters to divide the waters in two. And so it was. God made the vault and it divided the waters above the vault from the waters under the vault. God called the vault heaven. Evening came and morning came, the second day. God said, let the waters under heaven come together into a single mass and let dry land appear. And so it was. God called the dry land earth and the mass of waters seas. And God saw that it was good. God said, let the earth produce vegetation, seed bearing plants and fruit trees bearing fruit with their seed inside on the earth. And so it was. The earth produced vegetation, plants bearing seed in their several kinds, and trees bearing fruit with their seed inside in their several kinds. God saw that it was good. Evening came and morning came, the third day. God said, let there be lights in the vault of heaven to divide day from night, and let them indicate festivals days, and years. Let them be lights in the vault of heaven to shine on the earth. And so it was. God made the two great lights, the greater light to govern the day, the smaller light to govern the night, and the stars. God set them in the vault of heaven to shine on the earth, to govern the day and the night, and to divide light from darkness. God saw that it was good. Evening came and morning came, the fourth day. God said, let the waters teem with living creatures and let birds fly above the earth within the vault of heaven. And so it was. God created great sea serpents and every kind of living creature with which the waters teem and every kind of winged creature. God saw that it was good. God blessed them saying, Be fruitful, multiply, and fill the waters of the seas, and let the birds multiply upon the earth. Evening came and morning came, the fifth day. God said, Let the earth produce every kind of living creature, cattle, reptiles, and every kind of wild beast. And so it was. God made every kind of wild beast every kind of cattle, and every kind of land reptile. God saw that it was good. God said, let us make man in our own image, in the likeness of ourselves, and let them be masters of the fish of the sea, the birds of heaven, the cattle, all the wild beasts, and all the reptiles that crawl upon the earth. God created man in the image of himself, in the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them, saying to them, Be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth and conquer it. Be masters of the fish of the sea, the birds of heaven, and all living animals on the earth. God said, 
See, I give you all the seed-bearing plants that are upon the whole earth, and all the trees with seed-bearing fruit. This shall be your food. To all wild beasts, all birds of heaven, and all living reptiles on the earth, I give all the foliage of plants for food. And so it was. God saw all he had made, and indeed it was very good. Evening came, and morning came, the sixth day. Thus heaven and earth were completed with all their array. On the seventh day, God completed the work he had been doing. He rested on the seventh day after all the work he had been doing. The word of the Lord. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who are wonderful in the ordering of all your works, may those you have redeemed understand that there exists nothing more marvelous than the world's creation in the beginning, except that at the end of the ages, Christ our Passover has been sacrificed, who lives and reigns forever and ever. A 
our reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses, Why do you cry to me so? Tell the sons of Israel to march on. For yourself, raise your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea and part it for the sons of Israel to walk through the sea on dry ground. For I, for I, for my part, will make the heart of the Egyptians so stubborn that they will follow them. So shall I win myself glory at the expense of Pharaoh, of all his army, his chariots, his horsemen. And when I have won glory for myself at the expense of Pharaoh and his chariots and his army, the Egyptians will learn that I am Lord. Then the angel of God, who marched at the front of the army of Israel, changed station and moved to their rear. The pillar of cloud changed station from the front to the rear of them and remained there. It came between the camp of the Egyptians and the camp of Israel. The cloud was dark and the night passed without the armies drawing any closer the whole night long. Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. The Lord drove back the sea with a strong easterly wind all night, and he made dry land of the sea. The waters parted, and the sons of Israel went on dry ground right into the sea, walls of water to the right and to the left of them. The Egyptians gave chase. After them they went right into the sea, all Pharaoh's horses, his chariots, and his horsemen. In the morning watch, the Lord looked down on the army of the Egyptians from the pillar of fire and of cloud and threw the army into confusion. He so clogged their chariot wheels that they could scarcely make headway. Let us flee from the Israelites, the Egyptians cried. The Lord is fighting them against the Egyptians. Stretch out your hand over the sea, the Lord said to Moses, that the waters may flow back on the Egyptians and their chariots and their horsemen. Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and, as day broke, the sea returned to its bed. The fleeing Egyptians marched right into it, and the Lord overthrew the Egyptians in the very middle of the sea. The returning waters overwhelmed the chariots and the horsemen of Pharaoh's whole army, which had followed the Israelites into the sea. Not a single one of them was left. But the sons of Israel had marched through the sea on dry ground, walls of water to the right, and to the left of them. That day, the Lord rescued Israel from the Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians lying dead on the shore. Israel witnessed the great act that the Lord had performed against the Egyptians, and the people venerated the Lord. They put their faith in the Lord and in Moses, his servant. It was then that Moses and the sons of Israel sang this song in honor of the Lord. The Lord is my strength, and I shall sing his praise, for he has become my Savior. Let us sing to the Lord, let us sing to the Lord. He has covered himself in glory, he has covered himself in glory. Sing to the Lord, for he is gloriously triumphant. Horse and chariot he has cast into the sea. My strength and my courage is the Lord, and he has been my savior. He is my God, I praise him, the God of my father. I extol him. Let us seek to the Lord. Let us seek to the Lord. He has covered himself in glory. He has covered himself in glory. The Lord is a warrior. Lord is his name. Pharaoh's chariots and army he hurled into the sea. At a breath of your anger, the waters piled up. The flowing water stood like a mound. The flood waters congealed in the midst of the sea. Let us 
us sing to the Lord. Let us sing to the Lord. He has covered himself in glory. He has covered himself in glory. The enemy boasted, I will pursue and overtake them. I will divide the spoils and have my fill of them. I will draw my sword, my hand shall despoil them. When your wind blew, the sea covered them. Like lead, they sank in the mighty waters. Let us seek to the Lord. Let us seek to the Lord. He has covered himself in glory. He has covered himself in glory. Let us pray. O God, whose ancient wonders remain undimmed in splendor even in our day, for what you once bestowed on a single people, freeing them from Pharaoh's persecution by the power of your right hand, now you bring about as the salvation of the nations through the waters of rebirth. Grant, we pray, that the whole world may become children of Abraham, and inherit the dignity of Israel's birthright. Through Christ our Lord. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. The word of the Lord was addressed to me as follows. Son of man, the members of the house of Israel used to live in their own land, but they defiled it by their conduct and actions. I then discharged my fury at them because of the blood they shed in their land and the idols with which they defiled it. I scattered them among the nations and dispersed them in foreign countries. I sentenced them as their conduct and actions deserved. And now they have profaned my holy name among the nations where they have gone, so that people say of them, these are the people of the Lord, they have been exiled from his land. But I have been concerned about my holy name, which the house of Israel has profaned among the nations where they have gone. And so say to the house of Israel, the Lord says this, I am not doing this for your sake, house of Israel, but for the sake of my holy name, which you have profaned among the nations where you have gone. I mean to display the holiness of my great name, which has been profaned among the nations which you have profaned among them. And the nations will learn that I am the Lord. It is the Lord who speaks. When I display my holiness for your sake before their eyes, then I am going to take you from among the nations and gather you together from all the foreign countries and bring you home to your own land. I shall pour clean water over you and you shall be cleansed. I shall cleanse you of all your defilement and all your idols. I shall remove the heart of stone from your bodies and give you a heart of flesh instead. I shall put my spirit in you and make you keep my laws and sincerely respect my observances. You will live in the land which I gave your ancestors. You shall be my people and I will be your God. The word of the Lord.
as the deer longs for running streams, so I long, so I long, so I long for you. As the deer longs for Thirst my soul for you, the God who is my life. When shall I see? When shall I see? See the face of God. As the dear longs for Echoes meet as deep is calling unto deep over my head. All your mighty waters sweeping over me. As the deer longs for. Continually the four delights in taunting me. Where is God? Where is your God? Where, oh, where are you? As the dear longs for Let us pray. O God of unchanging power and eternal light, look with favor on the wondrous mystery of the whole church and serenely accomplish the work of human salvation, which you planned from all eternity. Make the whole world know and see that what was cast down is raised up, what has become old is made new and all things are restored to integrity through Christ, just as by him they came into being, who lives and reigns forever and ever.
Let us pray. O God, who made this most sacred night radiant with the glory of the Lord's resurrection, stir up in your church a spirit of adoption, so that, renewed in body and mind, we may render you undivided service through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. When we were baptized in Christ Jesus, we were baptized in his death. In other words, when we were baptized, we went into the tomb with him and joined him in death, so that as Christ was raised from the dead by the Father's glory, we too might live a new life. If in union with Christ we have imitated his death, we shall also imitate him in his resurrection. We must realize that our former selves have been crucified with him to destroy this sinful body and to free us from the slavery of sin. When a Christian dies, of course, he has finished with sin. But we believe that having died with Christ, we shall return to life with him. Christ, as we know, having been raised from the dead, will never die again. Death has no power over him anymore. When he died, he died once for all to sin, so his life now is life with God. And in that way, you too must consider yourselves to be dead to sin, but alive for God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord.
He has risen. He is not here. See, here is the place where they laid him. But you must go and tell his disciples and Peter. He is going before you to Galilee. It is there you will see him, just as he told you. The Gospel of the Lord.
stand and face the font. Dear brothers and sisters, let us humbly beseech the Lord our God to bless this water he has created, which will be sprinkled upon us as a memorial of our baptism. May he graciously renew us that we may remain faithful to the Spirit whom we have received. Lord our God, in your mercy be present to your people who keep vigil on this most sacred night and for us who recall the wondrous work of our creation and the still greater work of our redemption, graciously bless this water. For you created water to make the fields fruitful and to refresh and cleanse our bodies. You also made water the instrument of your mercy. For through water you freed your people from slavery and quenched their thirst in the desert. Through water, the prophets proclaimed the new covenant you were to enter upon with the human race. And last of all, through water, which Christ made holy at the Jordan, you have renewed our corrupted nature in the bath of regeneration. Therefore, may this water be for us a memorial of the baptism we have received and grant that we may share in the gladness of our brothers and sisters who at Easter have received their baptism through Christ our Lord. Dear brothers and sisters, through the Paschal mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism so that we may walk with him in newness of life. And so now that our Lenten observance is concluded, let us renew the promises of holy baptism by which we once renounced Satan and his works and promised to serve God in the Holy Catholic Church. And so I ask you, do you renounce sin so as to live in the freedom of the children of God? I do. Do you renounce the lure of evil so that sin may have no mastery over you? I do. Do you renounce Satan, the author and prince of sin? 
I do. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? And may Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed on us the forgiveness of our sins, keep us by his grace in Christ Jesus our Lord for eternal life. Amen. This is the night Christians throughout the world rejoice in the freedom Christ won for us. With immense joy and gratitude, we lift up our hearts to our loving God. Christ. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. That the peace of the risen Christ which surpasses understanding, wash over our nation and world, bringing unity and harmony. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. That the God of creation, who found it very good, bless and increase our efforts to restore, protect, and enjoy the natural world. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For creation itself, may we cherish and preserve this great gift of God and treat all living things in our common home with care and respect. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. That the risen Christ, who suffered death out of love for us, renew our parish this Easter and give us an ever greater share of his spirit. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For those who find it difficult to discover hope in the circumstances of their lives, the bereaved, the sick, the unemployed, 
the displaced, the refugee, and those in troubled relationships. May we offer Easter hope to those in need. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all our beloved dead, may they share in the promise of eternal life won for us by the Lord's resurrection. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Loving God, graciously hear the prayers of your children gathered in this holy building, shaking with joy through the merits of Christ your Son. Lead us into your kingdom where you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Please extinguish your candles. At this point we take up our collection. Our two, our two collections are for the archdiocese. The first is the common fund which helps uh, support the priests of the diocese. And the second is share which uh, serves uh, diocesan needs, especially parishes in need. If you'd like to help us, please put something in the shrines or use our tap machine. 100% of what goes in the basket goes somewhere else, and I'm very generous, but I'm not that generous. <laughs> Pray, friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, we ask, O Lord, the prayers of your people with the sacrificial offerings that what has begun in Paschal mysteries may, by the working of your power, bring us to the healing of eternity through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. 
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this night above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb, who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death, and by rising restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. indeed holy O Lord and all you have created rightly gives you praise for through your Son our Lord Jesus Christ by the power and working of the Holy Spirit you give life to all things and make them holy and you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the Sun to its setting a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. 
may he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with John Henry Newman, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, and Dermot, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Father's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you my peace, I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, 
and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other some sign of peace. For communion, both uh, communion stations will have low gluten host. Please just ask the minister. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are thou, blessed are the, you who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word.
Let us pray. Pour out on us, O Lord, the spirit of your love, and in your kindness make those you have nourished by this paschal sacrament one in mind and heart. Through Christ our Lord. At this point of the Triduum, it would, I would be remiss if I didn't give thanks. Thanks to all of you for coming and praying so well. Thank you to all of those people who helped us pull off these liturgies looking somewhat effortless, not entirely. Uh, but, you know, we're a fairly small parish, and we rely entirely on people willing to help. We had people serving who've never done so before, emceeing who never did so before. We had readers who have never read for us. We're, we're pulling it off, and we're very thankful for everyone. Uh, and we're also uh, behind-the-scenes people, the, the four House of Bridget women, who uh, uh, Emily and Jane and Lizzo and Megan have just been running morning and noon and night. Catherine, our Director of Communications, who's putting so much online and keeping our communication so strong. And of course, our choir and Dominique, and for all the great work they've done. They have been running hard since uh, Palm Sunday, and it's just wonderful and spectacular, and thank you. Most of us here are on this end and up there are gathering again uh, tomorrow morning at 11 for Mass. Uh, you're welcome back. Uh, I even promised to have a, at least somewhat different homily. Uh, but if they show up for 6.15 tomorrow, enjoy a walk around the green. <laughs> the Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in the peace of Christ, alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God, alleluia, alleluia.